You are listening to the Tri-Quarter Transmissions Special. Epic. So, 42. Let's uh, introduce ourselves. So let's start, um, I guess, with the uh, uh, with the um, tricorder transmissions peeps, and I'll start by introducing Jeff, who is um, okay. Good. So Jeff, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll go to Marty, and uh, then I'll go, and then if Jim's back, we'll go to him. Oh well, I'm Jeff Hewlett, one of the managing partners of the Tricorder Transmissions Network, along with Heather Barker, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, but really wanted to be here. Uh, hopefully, we'll get her on one of the future Patreon chats. Um, and uh, I, I've been here as part of the, the Tricorder Transmissions for almost five years now. Uh, wow. You can find me on the original mission and uh, Shore Leave. And Disco Track and Supplemental Logs and all, pretty much all over the place. So uh, if you want to hear my voice, <laughs> chances are you'll find it if you listen to any of our shows. Nice. Marty? Uh, I'm Marty. I'm host of Reading Trek and sometimes Weekly Trek. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> T- tell us where you're at. Oh, I'm in um, Santa Ana, California, right near uh, like Disneyland and all that stuff. Uh, I've been to STLV once. I'll be going again this year. So if you see me there, feel free to say hi. Oh, I I forgot to say where I was, too. (laughs) I'm in Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, I'm pretty close to the the university, and this will be my fifth STLV. And wow, Jim's cat is loud. (laughs) (laughs) Good Lord, Jim, you got an angry cat. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Wouldn't be the first time a cat has been on our podcast. Uh, I just got some comments earlier that my cat showed up on shore leave <laughs> yeah. this past um, week. Oh, yeah. Yep. I love when cats show up. On- <laughs> so, Jim, uh, I got to tell you that Polly asked us all to introduce ourselves and just say yeah. what show we do and where we are. So why don't you, why don't you go ahead okay. and do that? And then I'll I am Jim Morehouse, and I am in Los Angeles, Playa del Rey, Ooh. to be exact. And and I'm the host of Trek Ranks, Polly. We've talked on Twitter. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Mr. Trek Ranks. Well, someday we'll see your I'm gonna see your show. Totally. Someday. Someday. So, am, I the, um, am I the first intro or the last? Oh, I, I have to go, but I'm like okay. the least important person here because I don't have anything interesting to say. Um Oops. oh self-deprecation is John's X-Men power. No, no, you know what? When I'm at like work. And they, they have one of those stupid team buildings, you know, and they're like, uh, you know, what is your superpower? I, I don't say that. You know what I say is, unfortunately, my superpower is one that a villain has, unfortunately. I'm like the juggernaut. Once I start going, I cannot be stopped, right? <laughs> so I don't care what it is. I will, like, pound it until I, you know, achieve victory. So anyway, that that's my superpower. So anyway, um, I'm John. I am the host of Trek Profiles, uh, which is – um, uh, something that I'm spending way more time on than I had originally planned when I started Same. doing this whole podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Get used yeah, to it, guys. We're, Get we're used right to it. there, Jim. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah. And, and I said, I'm only going to do one a month. And, yeah. and so then you amp that up quickly. <laughs> oh, my God. And right now, right now, as we speak, not including the episode that just dropped uh, yesterday, I think I have five episodes in production. Oh, my God. Wow. How does that even happen? (laughs) It's because people are contacting me saying, I want to be on the show. And I I was like, okay, well, I have to think about this because I I got so many. And it's it's really just it's it's really um, I got to say truly, sincerely, it's very gratifying for me that Mm -hmm. so many people want to tell Star Trek stories about their life, uh, which is what my podcast is about. So and you haven't Uh, asked me yet. Because I'm buried, dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm laying some knowledge on you, man. I, I, I literally, in fact, just today, someone who shall remain unnamed, uh, Heather, said, why, "Why am I not? Why have I not been on the show yet?" And I was like, "Oh, okay, guilt. All right, we're doing it." So now I, nice. I she's like the fifth. So I got five of them. I gotta put out like within the next two months. So uh, it's 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 all good though, and I'm so glad that people like the show um so anyway 
I do Trek profiles, and I am in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, I am only, as we speak, uh, about about 15 miles away from the Rio, where we will all be having a blast uh, in a couple months. So super jazzed about that. And uh, that's about it. But I am Don't also shoot your yourself, host. Jim. Please, we love you. I'm not. So. <laughs> But he's, keep, this, keep this room in order. He's, he's, got, he's fondling that phaser. He's got a, quite a phaser there. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, let's turn it over to the guests. So sitting at the top of my screen uh, is you, Carl. So introduce yourself. Oh, hello. Yes, uh, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Carl Wonders. Um, I've somehow managed to finagle myself onto, I don't remember how many of the shows that we have going on here. Quite at, a few. Uh, Tricorder. But uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm at listening to film. Uh, it's good to finally get to see everybody uh, on on screen here for the first time. Uh, been chatting with a lot of you on Twitter and and elsewhere. So great to be here. Yeah. You know, I gotta say, Carl, really quickly. I gotta say, my favorite ever Twitter conversation <laughs> was our Cybot conversation. <laughs> I, I, just, I have to go back in my Twitter history and try to capture all of that Cybok conversation because uh, there are so few Cybok lovers out there. I, when I have finally connect with one, it's, it's a great that, thing. That, that's that's funny because it, it, it was my least favorite conversation. <laughs> that was the intent, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and Cybok is definitely something else. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. All right, good. Well, you know, and we've exchanged a lot on Twitter too, Carl. So I appreciate your interactions with me, and uh, I really enjoyed your attention to the the music. Oh, uh, well, thank you. Of yes. Star Trek and all the other films you talk about because it's really freaking awesome. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, Chris. Um, my name is Chris Cavuzio. I'm also out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, nope. I am 20 minutes away from the Rio Hotel, uh, as opposed to 15. Uh, I have been listening to Tricoder Transmissions for quite some time. Two of my favorite, uh, two of my favorite podcasts on your guys' network are the two hosts that are sitting with us today, uh, Jim, uh, John K, and uh, and Mr. Morehouse. Uh, love your awesome. guys stuff, Jim. We've talked uh, uh, yeah, on, Twitter on Twitter at Trek Fan LV. Uh, yep. That's my Twitter handle. So anybody who wants to hit me up about Trek, that's it. Yeah, I've noticed that one. I love that. So, are, were you? Have you been in Vegas the last few years? I've been in Vegas uh, about twenty three years. I meant, I meant at STLV, but yes. Uh, about six years. About six yeah, years. Okay. I've been going. I missed the fiftieth anniversary. Uh, so I, I met Chris at the yes. Millennium Fandom Bar, yes, which is oh, the yeah. most amazing nerd fandom bar ever. <laughs> You're, it, it truly. And they were doing a special event in honor of the what, what was it, Chris? The it was tenth? the uh, it was the tenth or tenth anniversary and, of the yeah, closing of the experience. Yes. yes. Uh, oh and, God, I was there that and, year. Yeah. Oh, I was there and, for the closing. Oh, I was too. It was terrible. They had, they had April and so many of the other talents uh, mm -hmm. who worked the experience who were there at the fandom bar. They had exhibits. Um, Dr. Trek was there. Um, so many people were there. It was such a great time. Yeah. And you know, you know what? I just learned something this week that totally blew me away. Uh, Crystal Pisano, who is on my episode five, which just dropped last Wednesday, she was at that event here Whoa. in Vegas, and mm. I didn't meet her when I was there. And I was Wait, like, Oh, she we was know there. That. She She's was like, there. Yeah. If you if you had, did you listen to the episode, Chris? I did. I did. She was there. She sent me a picture, and I was like, "I have no recollection of this whatsoever." I, I, I didn't I, even see her. I didn't, I didn't see either. Her. And, and I hear I'm interviewing her. I was like, "Oh, I, I'd love to meet you someday and talk about this." She's like, "Yeah, you know, it'd be really great." Too bad I didn't see you at the uh, anniversary <laughs> the experience thing. Plenty of. I was like, I was at that, and the place is not all that big, so. Yeah. It was no, really it wasn't. <laughs> no. So you know. I'm going to throw this out there, John, I, uh, uh, a shameless plug for, for the Tricorder Transmissions. If you go back, if you go to our TricorderTransmissions.com and go to Supplemental Logs, one of our earliest Supplemental Logs is an interview with April A. Bear and Vernon Wilmer, who were two of the actors yep. at yep. the right experience there. talking about the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas. And it's one of my favorite 
old tricorder episodes. It was just a wonderful, wonderful thing. They've been on several of the shows, uh, so they've been around. But that interview, uh, Craig and I, when we went to the experience for the first time, um, you know, both of us had been there a couple of times, but we went back for the closing as well. Um, and it was a kind of an emotional thing for both of us. And to get the two of them on the show to talk about what it was like to work there and be a part of that experience was just a, a kind of a cathartic moment for us. So we're very fond of that that episode. So if you haven't heard that, um, you know, go back and check that one out. No, m- mad Mad props Love for them. tricorder transmissions, just overall, and and y'all should go check out the episodes um, if you have it. Some of the back catalog because it's just awesome. But I, that brings up a question I got for you, Marty. Yeah, which is I saw you just dropped your latest episode, which is all about the the newest uh, book uh, about yep. Saru. I, I have to admit I I didn't jump in and listen to it because I have the book, <laughs> but I haven't read it yet. You've got to read the book. To, you need to read the book like immediately. It's it's one of the best Star Trek books I've ever read. Wow, it's way okay. up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a and question here? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was okay. So I, I mean, obviously, I watched all of Star Trek and everything, but like the like all the novels or the graphic novels or whatever, like they're it, it's not the same writers as the shows. Like how. Like, how important is it to read all of these? You know, if I don't read it, it's like, it's just a question I've always thought about. Am I crazy? No, you're like, not it's crazy. Like a side, um, it's like a side story, but it's just like, if the writers of, of the shows aren't going to go in that direction, do they have to if the novels have gone that way? Does that make sense? No, the novels are treated very non-canon. Got so it. really, they're just kind of supplemental stories. Um, and if you listen to the interview we just did with James Swallow, who is the author of Fear Itself, um, he actually wrote an entire like back backstory for Saru, like from you know like birth to now. Mm-hmm. Um, and he gave it to the writers of Star Trek Discovery and said, "Hey, if you want to use this in your show, like feel free to." Um, and there were like a couple elements he used in his book. Um, but he said his book was changing like all the way up until like it came out basically until they had the hit print on the printer. Mm-hmm. So he's really hoping that that they don't steamroll over his book. But if they do, that's just kind of the nature of like Trek book writing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes things line up, sometimes mm-hmm. things get get written over in the shows and it's just the way it is. Yeah, I think the answer is is that you don't need to read them to mm-hmm. still enjoy and get everything out of the show because I yeah. don't read all of them. I used to read more. Yeah. But but there are times when you can tap into some at, that provide different angles and ways to look at them. So. Cool. But that one, Thanks that, for that, that. That sounds that one sounds good, Marty. Hey, Marty, do you have to read the other two books before you read that one? You don't have to, but it, there are characters that kind of arc throughout them. Yeah. Okay. So that helps. I'm a slow reader. <laughs> it's okay, Jim. I mean, I, I got to tell you, you know, I was a guest on another podcast on another network. D- d- don't hate me, Jeff and Heather. Sorry. Um, but we were doing a, a, a an you, episode John? about, it, it's okay. Now. <laughs> but I, I was doing it up. We were doing an episode about Saru. And one of the things I said right up front was, I got to tell you, I have a really hard time analyzing discovery about Saru because I read that Desperate Hours book uh, right when it came out. And I can't remember if it came out before the first episode of Discovery or right it around was, the same. It was after Bi- right Battle after. of the Binary Stars. Yeah, right after the first it, it was, episode. Yeah, so it was right there at the beginning. Yep. And and that book, without any spoilers, has so much interior Saru monologue in his ah. head that – I'm not capable, and I, I admit this is a failing. I'm not capable of analyzing Saru separately from the show as I read him in the book, because the book colored so much of the representation of him as I saw in the show. And I'm like, oh, I get why he's doing that. It's because of this thing I read in the book, you know. And I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to fancy it up, and as I say it, but the book gave such a powerful impression of how he was inside his internal monologue that I can't separate it from the Doug Jones portrayal in the show. Yeah. Mm. That's you interesting. Know? Yeah. And, 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 and I just, I, but I thought it was great. I mean, to me it was seamless and th- that's as far as that book. I read the other, 
uh, book two, which was the other one um, that came later, which has a similar name, uh, Desperate Hours uh, and Drastic Measures. Drastic Measures, which I also loved for totally different reasons, but it didn't have the same effect on me because I guess the timing and the character and stuff. But it was it was really great. So I definitely recommend Desperate Hours. Um, it'll really change your thoughts about Saru. I'm halfway through it, that's, and I started reading it in November, just so everyone knows. That's, that's, <laughs> Jim, all, Jim, all three of those are available on audiobook if it's easier for you. I I really should do that, but then I listen to podcasts, and I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I tell you, like 15 years ago, I just said, I'm going to stop reading books. I'm going to read, like, there's too much other media. There's like magazines and pot, and uh, so, all right. terrible, terrible. I'm just going to throw in like my two recommendations for the best Star Trek books I ever read. And, you know, if you disagree, come at me, bro, on the Twitter <laughs> and sister. The Final Reflection I'm by John Ford. Yep. If, if you think you know anything about the TNG, uh, DS9, Voyager, you know, anything from that era, Klingons, it all came from that book. That's cool. It, it's the book that Ron Moore, who wrote Heart of Glory in TNG, oh, right? okay. he said, yeah, everything I put in that episode, which created like the whole like revised Klingons, comes from that book. So the second, one? Uh, the second one is Yesterday's Sun. Do you know yeah. that one? No, yeah, I do know that one, but I haven't read that one either. That's TOS, right? Yeah, yeah it's totally TOS. It's the Old follow school. on yeah. to... Um, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the episode, but it's the one where they all go back in time uh, from TOS. Like they go down to Mr. Ataz. Yeah, it's all our, all our yesterdays. Yeah. All our yesterdays. Yeah. And he's back with, and Spock is back with Mariette Hartley. Yeah. Uh, Zarabeth. Yeah, Zarabeth. She, she, she gets a oh, shout out on tomorrow's Trek ranks. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Jim, I, I sent you my ranking for that. I, I, I know, don't know. I have I haven't circulated the the hottest women picks yet. I'm gonna do that start tomorrow. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I I sent my picks in the gym too. I'm still waiting to see if mine got hit up or anything. Did you uh, send the men and the women? I just sent the women. I sent yeah, you the Hoshi the, one. The, I sent yeah, you the Hoshi yeah, one. Right. And, uh... I, saw, I saw the Hoshi. One. <laughs> I'm circulating <laughs> circulating the women this weekend. Yeah. For part two. Uh, on the subject of books, have any of you read uh, the Enterprise book that's supposed to be the final, uh, the true trip Tucker story? What was it, Last Full Measure? Yep. After, oh. what's it called? No. It's, it's Last Full Measure. It was the name of the book, but it was, supposedly it takes place, instead of these are the voyages, this yeah. is how. Oh, okay. Yeah. Section 31 story? Yeah. Oh. I've I'm heard of that. I haven't picked it up yet, one. though. I'm enjoying it. Nice. Spoiler alert, they faked his death. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, the last full measure, by the way, is a total reference to Abraham Lincoln. Okay. If you didn't, if you didn't know, so that, that's right out of a Lincoln speech. Oh, I like it. Oh. Mm. I, yeah. I never so know. you get something a little bit extra. If, the if, more if you, you know. All right. I got that. I'm gonna bring this, this is what your this is what your one dollar a month pays for, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing two. three, man. <laughs> Woo! Okay. I get hey, history so lessons. I thought I was one with that in high school. <laughs> I want to take a quick poll. Have you all you guys heard the big news that broke 30 minutes before this call? Yeah. What? We were what? just what? talking what? about it before. What? Oh, you guys are talking about it? Okay, good. Yeah. I just wanted what? to make sure. I didn't hear it. They're no. changing showrunners on Star Trek Discovery because huh? of some... What the what? Baron, Baron and Gretchen are out, oh. and Kootzman is in. Yeah. Really? Oh, yep. okay. I think it's probably and, a good thing. And Goldman thing. is out. Yeah, and Goldman was Goldman's out. He was out a few months ago. Yeah. So, anyway, okay, I wanted to make sure everyone was aware, because I'm like, my mind's like blowing up about wow. it. Wow. Hey, at least it gives us something to talk about on Weekly Trek this week. So, oh God, yeah, that's that's a <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It's slow news like until right now. Not, because, not now. <laughs> because you're our Patreons, uh, our patrons on Patreon, we have to share this. Uh, uh, we have a, a communications channel just for the hosts on uh, Tricorder, and we were talking about, oh, we got to do Weekly Trek this weekend. We were thinking, there's no news this week. Nothing is <laughs> happening. I was and like, I'll, I guess we're going to talk about IHOB or something. I don't know. Yeah, we're going to talk about <laughs> International House of Burgers. And all of a International sudden... International House like, of Borg. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. They were Swedish. 
that like three <laughs> seconds before we start doing this, this news lands. We're like, well, now we've got a whole show. So there wow. you go. <laughs> Which brings up a, a question I have for our Patreons uh, on the call today, which is, um, what, are, are you enjoying your Patreon extras? And is there anything that we could do to, to make it more exciting and better for you guys? Or is it, you know, it's the Goldilocks question. Too much, uh, not enough, just right? Let me start with you, Carl. You've been Good pretty question. quiet. Oh, well, no, I mean, I like getting the shows early. Um, getting the, especially some of the shows that have kind of the the banter beforehand where you get kind of the behind the scenes look at, at everything. Um, you know, I got to binge on all the hot people in Star Trek uh, back to back there with uh, Jim's show this week. Uh, didn't have to wait the week on the, whoa. That's book. That's by the way, that's Shepherd Book, by the way. Cat cat thinks uh yeah, cat agrees. Uh, <laughs> I mean the only the only downside to me is I think is that I, I listen to them early and then I don't have anything to listen to when they actually drop. It drops in a, oh, I've already heard that, but you know, what right. can you do? So eh, a little self control there, I guess. But, uh, no. <laughs> to do stuff like this, this is great. So I have, I have no complaints at all. How about you, Chris? I've got no complaints at all. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the the real factor, I guess, before the edited version. Uh, I've always been a fan of something like that. I always love the bloopers uh, in addition to the film and such of that nature. But uh, I have no complaints. And, and thank you guys so much for having us on, having this roundtable. It's absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Chris, You're I got to tell you. You are welcome, as, as Marty says, but I got to tell you that if you heard the unedited versions of Trek profiles, each episode would be like three hours long. <laughs> I heard the, I heard episode five, so I, I actually was in the car for two hours. No, no, no. That was the edited version. The unedited version is me going, what the hell are we supposed to be talking about? Wait, wait, wait. Where's this thing? Wait, what about this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what's happening. And, and then Crystal is like, oh, stop it. Just be a normal person. And I'm like, no, I demand perfection. Sterilize. <laughs> sterilize. You know, it's just. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay, John. A lot of the, um, the reading Trek stuff is like, where was that quote again? Flipping through the book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, you know, so I, I made the decision that I wasn't going to release unedited, but I would, I would release the banter. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's just, awesome though. I like to hear it. Yeah, I agree. I, I love it. My whole show is banter. It's <laughs> true. Your show is all banter. <laughs> it totally is. But you know, the thing I love about Jim's show is that everybody can weigh in with their ranks on Twitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, yes. which I shamelessly stole because uh, some I, one of my followers on Twitter and I honestly don't remember who I wish I knew who it was so I could give them credit they're like well why don't you tweet out the Kobayashi Maru questions on your podcast as a poll and I was mm -hmm. like well that's like totes obvious and I totally thought of that uh, <laughs> uh, twitter.com slash you know <laughs> and then I started doing that so I thought that was great so I shamelessly stole that from Jim and whatever listener uh, suggested that to me so there you go smart move um, if I could chime I feel so bad I'm not I'm not like on the on like you, you can't see my face that's our well, lot I'm, I'm that's so sad us. That's not I can see you guys and you're all so gorgeous um, yeah, so I'm, uh, <laughs> everybody posed. I love that. Um, yeah, I just, I'm also just, I, I'm so happy that, I mean, it's just a little bit each month, but I'm so happy to contribute to something that like, you know, uh, like all of the podcasts are so wonderful and they each bring something different to me. It's just like, Oh, what am I in the mood for today? Like to listen to it on the way to work. It's just like, Oh, I'll listen to this one today. And then, Oh my God, no, I'll listen to this. And it's, it's just, it's such a huge sense of community and love and acceptance. And it's just, we're all here for the same reason. And it's, it's just, I'm so happy that I, I, I only discovered this like once discovery started and, um, because uh, I'd known of the tricorder transmissions, like from being at uh, the Vegas Con in like 2015 and 2016, but I'd never really listened to it. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I love everybody on this. And now it makes me want to do my own podcast. And then I'm like, well, where am I supposed to find the time? So just like, uh, just like you're saying, John. So. <laughs> 
I'd like to echo Polly for a minute and say the same thing that she said. I'll just add on to it that being a Patreon member is I support anything of quality. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and that's and that's what it is. Tricorder Transmissions is quality podcast. Uh, I know I mentioned Trek profiles and Trek ranks, but the other shows too are also quality. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just trying to butter up the other two hosts because I want to be on the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there'll be some extra money at STLV and envelopes for them. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> honestly, uh, but what honestly, the what? Uh, huh? What the what? <laughs> no. I, I don't go down for this bribery stuff. You've mistaken me for a Ferengi, sir. Um, I'm, I'm adding you to the long list right now. I'll just <laughs> give your John. I'll just give your half to Jim. That's it. That, that's basically how it's going. Wow. Go. <laughs> I see. That's how we're going to roll up in here, yo. Okay. <laughs> no, but honestly, it's all about quality. You guys put out quality stuff, and I support mm-hmm. anything quality, fandom, things of that nature, things that strike me in in the, in the field. So. Thanks a lot for what you guys do. Yeah, and if I could add to that a little bit, I mean, the other thing I love about the network is just the positivity that comes out. I think, I mean, mm-hmm. you, you, there's occasionally, you know, the, you know, people taking issue with certain things on shows or whatever, but John. there isn't, there isn't, well, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell over? <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, th- there's not yeah, the, use, there's not the griping and the nitpicking that you hear on certain shows. In a so, so you know, it's it, it's it, you, you get. The, the Trek experience, but it's always kind of couched in, in positivity, and I I know that's really Jim's thing to start with, you know, no no wrong answers and everything. But I think mm-hmm. the whole network really reflects that that mantra. So mm-hmm. I, that's one of the things I really appreciate. That is, is you're, true. You're not that is you're not going to be down to listen to the shows. We, we, yeah. we love we all love Trek, and I I don't think you know, and I I don't mean to put myself in the position of speaking for all the the hosts of of Trek quarters, but I I really do believe that that every host on our network really does love Trek, and we want the absolute best. Uh, for, <laughs> He's got Jim, the phaser ready. He's got... A type two phaser as we speak. A type two TOS phaser for all you listening on on the, uh, audio right now. Uh, so I I don't know I don't know what's going on up there, but uh, you need to relax. Cause like it's all good, yo. Sucking traffic. <laughs> he's all good. He's sucking traffic. He the turns into a mirror. The cat is coming gym. back in the room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, please explain yourself, Jim. I, I feel called out. What's going oh, on? Oh, that was that was the there was the only, I couldn't call out Marty because I had to call out you. So it was a jo- uh, it was just a joke. You are awesome. You uh, oh. you're yeah. Well, that was that was a joke. There was no truth to that at all. All right. So, Sometimes goes in a little hard on Discovery. Sometimes, a little bit. Well, I love Discovery. Yeah, you can. Oh man, I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna get. No, you. you <laughs> no, with... it's, all, it's all positive. But it's, it's all <laughs> love, man. I just, I just don't want to understand. I love Discovery. So here's my, here's my issue with Discovery, and if you want to beat up on it. You didn't like the the Lorca switch because it changed the character and. True, because to me, my definition of Star Trek, which is mine, is that we will eventually solve our own problems and get to a better future. Yeah. Which I think is a great message, right? I mean, who can't get behind that, right? And I was expecting that Lorca would be the embodiment of that. But here we had this guy who was like deeply broken and he would sort himself out. And, and, and I, you know, that could have been my own fault. I, I totally get that. I'm not knocking the show for that. That That's what, but, that's, yeah, no, finish, sorry. And I was just going to say, it's because I was at STLV last year and I took the, and maybe it was my own interpretation of what they were saying, the writers were saying on Discovery Day at the convention that I, I, I took it to me. That's what we were going to get. And when I saw Lorca, I thought, this is the guy, mm. like mm. he's going to tell us that Star Trek story of how we get from the broken today to the better tomorrow. And I wanted to see that, you know, so I was excited about it. Um, the, the other knock I have on discovery, which is not, it's not a knock. It, it's just a, even it's an EBI, even better if, which is that I thought that one of the most awesome things about star Trek, uh, historically speaking, is that it told these amazing stories in a, in a little self-contained morality play. And because the show was serialized, we lost out on a bit of that. So. Yeah. Uh, that was why that's that's I mean that's pretty much why I brought it up and I knew and it's you're every right all that is totally fair and and even 
whenever I always hear that, and this is me being mis- – I mean, I am it's the okay, guy Michael. that you, – you put a logo on the side of a trash can. I'm like, that's awesome. Look at that. It's so cool. <laughs> Star Trek. It's on a trash can, Jim. I don't care. <laughs> so I always, my, I always think when I hear that, I'm like, so they, they didn't – make the show you wanted them to make i always think i i sit back i just let you make the show you guys want to make i'm along for the ride i don't think about Mm -hmm. what's coming next i'm along for the ride you make the show so that critique i always find because it wasn't you didn't guess it or you didn't predict it or it was different than what you thought i always that one always it always makes me scream at my radio when i'm listening to trek profiles and going john i'm gonna get out we're going to talk about this in Vegas, but we're going to do it on the Patreon call instead. And I love it. I'm so, so let me, so if I, if, ahead, if I may, if I may, let me just ask a question to the crowd here. Two questions. One, if it wasn't called Star Trek Discovery and just called Discovery, would you still be into it? They already oh, yeah. tried that with Enterprise and it didn't work. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. I, you know, Marty's got a point. Second off, um, the the whole Lorca thing, I, I enjoyed it. I just thought when once we found out that uh, Lorca had leather on, he kind of looked like Perry King from the Lords of Flatbush. Yeah. That's basically. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> oh my god! I am going to find a picture of Perry King, Lords of Flatbush, and I will tweet that after this call. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I well, love it. I, I'm not going to dwell on it. I'll say one last thing about this, which is that um, watching the show as enraptured as I was on the edge of my seat, I thought that Lorca had a lot to offer. I thought he had a lot to say. I thought he was a very interesting character. And I just thought the idea that making him a mirror universe guy sort of flattened him into a two dimensional mustache twirling sort of villain dude. And I was hoping for more. So I guess that's another question. And yeah. Um, I, I, I kind of wanted something like that, but that's not a critique, right? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. some of us, the restaurant, some of us want the chicken, some of us want the steak, some of us want the tofu. <laughs> it's okay. Of it's course. It's IDIC, it baby. It's Absolutely. all good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Meanwhile, the, what you described as the, uh, as the, or, lor, the, uh, Lorca arc was actually the Burnham arc right in front of you the whole time. Uh... Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> that, which is the best thing about the series of my I can't, again I don't get a lot of people don't like the Burnham character. I love the Burnham character. She's awesome. I have to yeah. say this is the is, oh. this is the I anytime there was a mirror universe episode in any of the other series, I I hated it. I uh, I just I hate I'm so I know John Space. I really I'm like <laughs> what the hell is this <laughs> so then when i'd heard the rumors that discovery and there's gonna be mirror universe and i'm like oh god so then when it finally kind of happened i was just like wait a minute this works this time it's not like it's just kind of like thr- it literally felt like that south park episode where it's like you know in the other in the other series i just i didn't i just felt like i know they were having fun with it in like you know like all the other ones but it's it never worked for me and i just anytime i rewatched the series itself i would just skip over the mirror universe episodes but when it came to discovery they finally actually got it right for me and they did it where i actually cared and they actually really were still investing in the characters and not just doing something oh we're just gonna have a really fun episode like i know that deep space nine Mm -hmm. is my favorite of all the series and i know that because they did such long story arcs um, was fantastic. So when they did the Mirror Universe episodes for that, they really were continuing with the, the serialization, but it still I, it still didn't work for me. So I was so happy that when it finally got to Discovery and they did it, they got it right. And so I'm like so excited about what's coming up next. And now that we have these new showrunners, I just, it'll be, you know, it'll be a different season. But I mean, all of a sudden we've all, you know, now here we've got the Enterprise in front of us. So it's obviously going in a completely different direction. So, uh, yeah, like we're all sitting here. I have no idea where it's going, but uh, like Jim, I'm in for the ride, man. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. Carl, you were nodding your head. What what, what do you think? <laughs> well, actually, I was nodding my head, I think, because I, I tend to agree with, with you, John, on the, on the, the Lorca arc. Um, not, not so much, not so much that I just, <laughs> no, come on, Jim. No, no, no. Not so much that I, I don't like there where they your, went with there it. There go your hopes of being on uh, Trek Breaks. Uh, no, he's been there already. Top, four, top five glory moments. Yes. 
Uh, and then he leaves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jim just walked out. Mic drop. Uh, no, but I, I, I was fine with the way the story went. I just, I, I agree with John that I was much more interested in Lorca as a character who was broken and hopefully going to be fixed over the course of the show than what we ended up getting where he was really the, the mirror character all along. And he was, of course he was a, a bad guy and, and, and yeah, he turned into kind of the, the mustache twirling two dimensional villain a little bit towards the end there. And, and I was actually still hoping that he was going to be the one that survived the whole way through the end and, mm. and was, was the one that they brought back instead of, uh, Giorgio, I like Giorgio as a character very much, but oh, well, hello, cat. Uh, <laughs> hello, um, spot. Yeah, oh. no, you, you Carl, you're, 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 that was book. That was book, by the way. Yeah. Gravy's trying to get up here right now, though. Uh, oh. Should be trouble. See, so if I can just add one more thing, right? The, I mean, the thing is that even though it was, oh, kitties, the listeners are going to be going, what the hell is going on yeah. over there? <laughs> Um, yeah, the Patreon's going to be like, I got to get up in this Patreon video thing next time. <laughs> Tricorder Transmissions Live. Um, That's like, it. <laughs> Lorca, it was the the Mirror Universe Lorca, but like none of the crew noticed the difference. Oh, but right? the, on the rewatch, it's so well done. It's so good. Yeah. Like, so this is the I thing. I haven't rewatched yet since the... Like, see, Kitty agrees. It's just so it's not like it was a completely different Lorca because it was it. It's like what was you know the Prime Universe Lorca like? And I mean, like, is he gonna show up? You don't know. Yeah, could don't. still. You could still. I think it, I, the only taste we have of Prime Lorca uh, is in the second book. Uh, mm, Marty, yes. help me out. Uh, drastic measures. Drastic, drastic measures. measures. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and that book has Prime Lorca in it, and we see mm. sort of his um, thoughts as as he's in a mission. It's, that that's the weird, only though, thing we know. Prime Lorca the only is, thing we know. It, Prime Lorca is exactly like Mirror Lorca, but less mustache twirly. You know what? You bring up something really interesting, Marty, because I was talking about this on the last episode of, of my silly little show, which <laughs> is, I I no, I'm serious, I. I was talking to my guest who really loved Tilly, mm. and, which is great. And I thought, you yeah. know, Tilly's fantastic. Who doesn't love Tilly, right? If you don't love Tilly, you're some kind of monster and, you know, <laughs> you know cast, cast about from our company. But we never actually saw the real Tilly. Mirror Tilly. Killy. No. We never saw the real Killy, right? Yeah. And And I posited, you know, just intellectually thinking about it, that if we ever saw the real Killy – we would end up hating her. <laughs> oh, know? yeah. Because, I mean, this is someone who in you know del would delight in the evaporation of millions of people. And, you know, I mean, just she was like a really horrendous character based on what we heard. And not that I think Mary Wiseman wouldn't have totally killed. <laughs> see that? See what I did there? Yeah. In that yeah, role? You did. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. <laughs> All right. All right. Beat me up on Twitter. But <laughs> not that Mary wouldn't have done a great job, but, you know, I, I just kept thinking, like, I, I think, like, a lot of fans would have been like, oh, that's uh, too much, you know? I don't think Lorca was mush, mustache twirl twirling at all. I think that's the whole reason you got hooked into him. You thought he was the uh, damaged guy, and then... I love that twist. I think it was. Yeah, great. You, you didn't know his plan until the end. I, I love yeah. it. And, uh, and, and on the rewatch, oh my gosh, it's so much more fun on the rewatch to, to realize he, how how much he's playing them. Mm. It's only it's, fun because you don't have to wait seven days. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the binge. Yeah. All right, well, anyway, let, we can... let me posit something and you guys beat up on it and tell me, and, and lady, you, you tell me if I'm wrong. And lady. I, I think that I think that the one of the interesting things about Star Trek is, you know, people love TOS, people love TNG, but the people and people love Voyager and people love, you know, some people uh, I enjoy Voyager. animated series. That's just for you, Jim. Yep. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but some Jim, people... I'm trying to figure out a way to sneak the animated series into the next Trek ranks. Oh, don't. By the way, Marty, every single Just because I know you hate it so I'll be so disappointed. But you you can every do it, Marty. I'll, I'll be cool about it. Gym, I always try to put in animated series just because yeah. I'm, like, subversive like that. But um, uh, what was I going to say? 
I uh, forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. <laughs> Something about TNG. TOS. Everybody, everybody likes every every. Uh, really love Deep Space Nine, right? Yes. I mean, like, like the level of love that people have for Deep Space Nine seems to me to be a standard deviation above like the other episodes, you know, in the other series. I I could be wrong about that. I I don't know. I'm happy to to be beaten up on that or readjust my thoughts. But you have a guy like Cisco who, in the pale moonlight. Is uh, like yeah, I totally yes. was willing to, you know, lie, cheat, and steal yep. to get what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And these My favorite broken, episode, dude, uh, you know, these deeply broken uh, dudes and, and ladies, you know, in, in yeah. Deep Space Nine, fans seem to really like that, you know. And so I'm, I, I think that there is space for that in Trek fandom. Whereas, you know, in TNG, it was much more serious and self-important. And, you know, Picard really was on a pedestal, you know, and I'm not taking anything away from it. I'm just saying it was, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, strawberry to the pralines and cream. You know, it was just a different flavor. But um, I, I don't know. What do, what do you guys think? Well, I think if I can jump in, I think it's also because like like they, they invested so much in the storylines in Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I'm so passionate about this show. It's pretty much like we had already been like in like in the Dominion War and just like the Federation getting hammered for like what two years almost. And so you it wasn't just like an episode out of the blue. Like you've been like suffering with them for so long. And then all you want, like just we just need to win. We just just need to break through and it just never came and never came and then for him to admit this um it was just like oh god you know what and it made us like question what would i do in that situation for for the better good right to save humanity would i do that and because we had been like along for the ride because this was like season six i guess by this point yeah. near the end yeah, right um, yeah. Like, it, it, like I said, like we were like so heavily into the Dominion War and they'd lost like, what was it like the, the first episode of season six, we'd learned like we'd lost like what, like 183 starships or something. And it's just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, it was literally because of that. And because you traveled uh, so long with them and you were you were one of them. It really you felt like you were one of the crew and uh, just really thinking about what exactly you would do in your position about that. So that's, that's what I say. It really, it really made you think about, you know, things in your own life and your own perspective. And that's why you can't, there's so many people that don't fault him because you're like, no, he's, he's trying to, to save everybody. And this is the only, they're not these, these goddamn Romulans, (laughs) right? (laughs) Like, please, we need your help because we're all dying. We're all going to die. The casualty list that keeps coming up every day is just like everybody's morale. Everybody feels horrific and there's no hope. There's no hope right now. And so literally it's just like, well, if this is what I have to do to save all of us. Mm -hmm. And then like he says, I can live with that. And I so can it, live with yeah, that. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I, yeah, that's what I feel. For sure. Good, Polly. How, how about you, uh, Carl? Chris, what do you think? I'll let Carl go first. Go ahead. <laughs> oh uh, no, I I absolutely agree, and I go back to the, the Deep Space Nine. You know, everybody seems to hold that one up. up above i guess the other ones in a lot of ways i mean i kind of wonder you know of of the people here did everyone feel that way the first time it came on or did you come around to it later because i know i definitely no liked it i didn't but i i i came i came to deep space nine after the after the fact a little bit where because we had you had um and it probably because i was younger too i wasn't that old when it came on but um you know it was my like junior high high school but to have uh next generation on early and then you compared it to voyager where you have kind of the this quote-unquote stereotypical 24th century star trek and you have this kind of black sheep show that for me and and i'll be honest you know as a 16 year old i don't think i appreciated Mm -hmm. what they were trying to do um on that show as much as i do you know coming to it now but you know when i went to college and then kind of missed the last couple seasons and said i'm going to go back and rewatch this and then said wow like now i get what they're trying to do with the show and actually tell a full story over multiple seasons and be a more, more, dare I say, adult kind of show than maybe the other Star The other Star Treks are, are not kitty shows up by any stretch of the imagination, mm-hmm. but, you know, they're, they're definitely ones that you can appreciate as a younger person more than I think you can. 
the politics and the the religion aspects of D Space Nine that maybe went over my head the first time I went to watch it. So, um, and I know Chris, you wanted to say something. Yeah, same same thing. Yeah. Um, the, you know, Deep Space Nine, the first three seasons didn't hit me because for me, the first three seasons was the new sheriff in town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had the religious issues, it had all the stuff, but it didn't hit me like the fourth season did when they got Trigger, i.e. the Defiant, and they ended up going off into the sunset and, and solving issues. As I got older rewatching this series, it hit me more because I started understanding the religious issues, the pol- the politics mm-hmm. behind it, and all the subtext that was involved and on top of that it was it's probably the first or uh, I'm not, I'm sorry it is the first darkest star trek that they've had mm-hmm. and it was a pioneer in itself i mean not only was it the pioneer of the first african american captain it, uh things of that nature uh religion tackling uh you know politic tackling this is the dark and gritty side Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that's what resonates with everybody most because, again, TNG, Voyager, all happy, skipping through the tulips, blah, blah, blah. But with DS9, it's hard because the topics that they tackled in the seven years still resonates today. And it's part of Roddenberry's vision that each series has these type of, has these type of moral uh deficit moral deficient episodes i guess would be a better mm-hmm. word um in each of the series but the ds9 has the most out of its well, seven year run and if i could just jump on that point a little bit i mean you i i think that that's also with you know discovery i think both discovery and deep space nine are in a way telling a similar story of what does war mm-hmm. do to people who mm-hmm. live in a society that wants to do good and i kind of wish that in a way they'd spent a little more time on the, the lead up to the war itself so that you saw what the Federation or what Starfleet or what, I mean, what it was, whatever they called it then, I guess it was Starfleet, what it was like before the war happened so that you could see that disintegration of, because I think that's, that's, that's the major criticism that I hear that I don't agree with at all, where they say, Oh, it's not that positive view of the future that we wanted to get from Star Trek. And sure we have to work our way back there. But to see it actually be lost and then regained again, I think would have been is what they're trying to do with it. And I don't know if if it necessarily was a little too quick in the setup or what have you. But that that also is what I like about Deep Space Nine is that you have the Federation ideal represented. You know, Picard shows up at the beginning and he puts Cisco in charge, and Cisco has this history with Picard, and he, they get off on the wrong foot, um, and then they learn what they have to do out in the backwaters of the Federation to survive, and then they go to war and all these bad things happen to people. I mean, there's even that episode that I won't try to pronounce the name of because it's in Latin and I always mix up the words, but uh, that Ron Moore wrote about, you know, in, in, in war, you have to do what you, I, I forget the, what oh, the translation right, yeah. is. Um, Interim, interitum, even sealant, even I guess, or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if it's that, pronounced that right. That one, that one. <laughs> but basically it's, it's saying, you know, you're justified to do bad things in times of war, essentially. And, and I think that's kind of where, Discovery went with with its story and it's the mm-hmm. dark tones of its of its show as well. By the way, one of my favorite, um, not really Star Trek, but pure acting thespian moments in all of Star Trek and all seven hundred and something hours, is that scene between Cisco and Picard, between Avery mm-hmm. Brooks and Pat Stru- and Pat Stu. Uh, Sir Patrick Stewart, right when um, he, I'm gonna you know, call him. Patrick, I'm Stewart thinking now. about his Twitter because I'm on Twitter all the time. So yeah. about his Twitter. Is that like J Lo? Totally <laughs> but uh, when when he when he says, "Oh, you know," right in the emissary when he's like, "Oh yes, we've met before." Well, we've met before. Mm-hmm. Yes, at the Battle of Wolf Three Five Nine. Just just one of my most favorite yep. acting moments, you know, from a pure theatrical perspective in the whole. 700 and something episodes it's it's right up there you know and just the way that that patrick stewart handles it and the yeah. way that avery brooks responds to it just totally beautiful it yeah. actually puts you into patrick stewart into picard's shoes too mm-hmm. you know because yeah. in, in that scene because how would you react if somebody told you hey you oh. killed my wife and child you killed yeah. my wife and 175 of my people and you sit there and go when did i do that yeah, and he's trying yeah. to act as and he's trying to act as the superior officer in that moment, right? Right. right. You, know, there's, yeah. there's, you know, as as the thespians among us would say, there's a lot of subtext going on up there, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. But uh, wow. So 
Hey, we've uh, reached the time limit for our show uh, today. <laughs> what? I know, right? I know already. I know. Oh, it, it went by at like warp, I, you know, 9.7. I wanted to ask our Patreon supporters if they had any, before we go, any any further questions for us. We've asked a lot from you, but do you have any questions for us? I have none. <laughs> Any t- track ranks secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'll>... Hashtag carrots. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, if I can say really quickly, I I didn't get to do my intro. Anywho, so I'm Polly from Toronto, Canada. So oh, that's I'm just, right. I'm just Hi, awesome Polly. in general. Um, so I did. Um, I just came back from the Orlando Fringe Festival, and I did a one woman show called Damn It, Jim. I'm a comedian, not a doctor. And um, it went over really well. It was my first Fringe ever, and uh, I had such a great time. And it's basically the story of how I – the first half is me talking about my life and how I basically um, became uh, an alcoholic and then discovered Star Trek basically for the first time in 2013, did a two-year marathon of watching all of the series for the very first time. Uh, In two years? Then I know. And then going to the 2015 and 2016 (laughs) convention and basically how – um, the the Star Trek, um, just everything about the Star Trek universe has actually helped me in my recovery as uh, as you know an alcoholic and moving on with my life. And I'm coming up uh, October will be 11 years sober for me. And um, yeah, so basically um, I'm coming around to thinking because I love the tricorder transmission so much thinking and ruminating in my head about possibly considering doing a podcast about sobriety and so oh so much work so much work so you must do it it's a lot of work but it's well worth it yeah it's it's all good it's not a lot of work i realize and we need it's not it's all good well it's not a lot of work for you maybe but i gotta read a whole book every week (laughs) that's true it's insane but i would just love to be able to like pick your brain you know what it's funny we started as a weekly show and that quickly Mm -hmm. faded (laughs) because <laughs> that's like superhuman brain strength there to go through a book a week <laughs> yeah you know what happened with me and i'm sure that the other hosts on the network would agree is that you know i i committed to doing my show once a month but then people are like oh you podcast well then you should be a guest on my show and go oh, come on my show and come yeah. on this other show and so now i'm like <laughs> yeah and, and like as we sit here i think there's about three different shows on three different networks where i'm a guest which is like really bad because <laughs> when my voice comes out of your fills your ear holes like your earphones might self-destruct so like really bad so no um, no not yeah. true God. but thank you jim you're you're very kind but it's it's uh, too much <laughs> so it, it it just gets to be overwhelming you have to learn what to say no to when you get oh, a podcast. I know. Well, I'm going to say this. So Marty's going to be on Trek Ranks next, the next episode after tomorrow's. Uh-huh. Carl's already been on, and he'll be <laughs> back someday. <laughs> Chris and Polly, I'm going to reach out to you guys. We're going to get, <laughs> totally. you, on the, we're gonna get totally. you on the long list for a good topic. <laughs> And John, you, it is happening, man. It's, you've been on my long list forever, but uh, you should put him on your be on the top five series. discovery moments. Oh. <laughs> yeah. John, we already did that. We already did that. Marty, we the are... uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna get him on something that he can't f with me. Yeah, I, I <laughs> but I never do that, man. Ferengi? Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm a, I, I never Ooh, do that. I, I, just... I like it, Ferengi. I love the Ferengi. Yes. There you go. I love the Ferengi. How do you not love the Ferengi? What, are you some kind of monster Oogie. that you don't love the Ferengi? You know? Uh, that's what that's one of our long list topics. Yeah, you know what? I'll say this. Uh, I, I was just putting on Twitter just like a couple weeks ago that I feel really bad for Quark in Deep Space Nine because I'm doing a Deep Space Nine oh, yeah, rewatch. Yeah. yeah. And I feel so bad how he's abused by the Starfleet people <laughs> and by yeah. like Odo. Yeah. You know? Like Okay, I, I was just. What's the? I, I forget the name of the episode, but it's the one where he finds the baby Jem Hadar on this salvage that he buys. Oh, I, right. Oh, good. And, and yeah. was like, "Yeah, we're taking the ship." He's the like, abandoned. By the way, I brought the, yeah, the abandoned. Uh. I bought the ship. I found there was a baby. I brought it to you. I did the correct thing. And he's like, "Yeah, we're taking everything, and you're not getting anything for it." What? What is that all about? Hey, well, you me- remember the time he uh, let those guys, uh, the trill on the station, to almost kill Dax yeah. in invasive procedures? Uh, yeah, he's yeah. paying for that one, John. Okay, still paying <laughs> yeah, for that what? one. 
I, I got I got a ten year old. He's right downstairs. I could bring him up here, and if mm -hmm. I were, he would tell you that the one lesson I teach him is just because somebody else does something doesn't mean it's okay for us to do, right? <laughs> so just because other people are nefarious doesn't mean it's okay for Starfleet to be that with the same way, right? That, if we have that's a that's a lesson. I'm a gray area. I'm a gray area on that one, John. That's sometimes, a sometimes tit for tat is okay. Oh okay. wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I have high standards. High. I high have low standards. standards. Low standards. Well, when all else fails, just listen to Morn. <laughs> oh yes. 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 Great okay. advice. I approve uh, that love story, but I guess that's all for naught. Um, hey, okay. since, uh, let's do this. So, since because Polly's show, which I've seen her talk about on Twitter, it looks amazing, and someday I do want to see it. Hopefully, that'll happen. Oh, uh, actually, I'm going to. Can I? Can I do a plug? I'm actually going that's to. That's what I was going to say. Plug it, and then we'll have uh, see if Chris and, and Carl want to plug something because I know Carl's got uh, some awesome uh, <laughs> score musical background knowledge. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, I yeah, so I, I had a, a successful run at the Orlando Fringe, and I'm going to be actually I've been invited to um, uh, perform it in Denver, Colorado, um, the last weekend of September. Um, it's a brand new solo performer festival that's starting, and I've been invited, which is like awesome. Uh, cool. It's going to be called the One Theater Festival. So information will be coming out about that soon, and I'll be posting that everywhere. Um, so I'll be there, and I have to get better at Twitter. Oh my God! I'll I'll get I'm I'm doing all right, but I'm going to be posting everywhere, and then probably doing it again in Toronto, uh, here in my hometown town before the end of the year and maybe hopefully New York at some point because uh, I've done a lot of shows there and I'd like to head back so but that's it for now Denver for sure last weekend of September party at Heather's place there you go yeah, so where should uh, people find you if they want to find out more about that Polly um, you can find my personal Twitter at at polyester gems. Don't forget the H in polyester guys. And then I created a uh, Twitter handle for my show and it's at damn it Jim show. Nice. Yes. And there you go. Carl, Chris, who wants to go next? I'll let Carl go. Go ahead. All right. Um, so I am on Twitter as well. I'm at listening to film. Uh, my occasional blog unfortunately time has gotten away from me a little bit but uh, my blog is listening to film.net uh talking all about uh film scores um and the films that they go along with um again trying to keep the positivity it's not a i'm gonna rant about something i don't like it's a lot of stuff that i actually just do like um going through uh the star trek films i've gotten all the way up to jim's favorite star trek five um, and uh, I am trying to get through Star Trek Six. It's been a little harder than I expected. Um, I like I like way too much of it, and cutting out stuff has been hard. Um, and just a little bit of a teaser: there may be a podcast in the works coming up at some point in the near future. I'm really trying to get some stuff recorded for that. So I've heard that uh, that's a possibility. It is yeah. a possibility. Yes. So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. It is harder than it sounds. So as mm -hmm. I'm learning. Without giving too much away, <laughs> I love the concept of it. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful, C C Carl. Thank you. Was it your Twitter I was reading? I and I th we were. I was talking with somebody, and it might have been you. We were talking mm -hmm. about Star Trek Three, and I, I was talking about how the soundtrack for that is my all-time favorite. Yeah. And, and someone, it might have been you, said that that the the my favorite moment is stealing the Enterprise. And someone said it's about five old guys back in a car out of the garage, and the only <laughs> thing that makes it awesome is the music. Uh, I, bet, I, I was I was part of that discussion, but that was not that was not my my own comment. I can't claim that. But Futuristic it, Ocean's it's Eleven. A wonderful, wonderful description of that scene, though. <laughs> because the music except, does I, kill it. I, I think the whole scene is amazing and one of my favorite you know, nine minutes of all of Star Trek. So, uh, yeah, but I do remember that. It was not. So if people are interested, they can <laughs> dig through Twitter and find out who that was. But that was just my favorite comment on that. But I just thought it was totally true. So, Chris, tell us about you, man. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TrekFanLV, the T, the F, L, and V, R, capital. Um, I love everything Trek. You'll find me posting a lot of Trek stuff, a lot of zany stuff. Uh, those that follow me know how my sense of humor can be. Those that have listened to this current podcast know how my sense of humor can be. It just doesn't <laughs> stop there. Um, 
You'll find me at STLV 2018 with the rest of the 140,000 people that'll be there. I'll be the one dressed up like someone from Star Trek. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you'll be you'll be easy to spot then. Good, I like that. Yeah, I'm the only I'm the only guy who stands six four and looks like a kangaroo. So that that'll be. Uh... <laughs> Monster maroon kangaroo, by the way. Uh, but otherwise, that's about it. That's the only place you can find me. Uh, Jim, I love your idea. Please I mean, reach out to me. We'll get in touch. We'll talk hey, about it. Let's, uh, let me say this, because I was just checking my Twitter, and I just saw your tweet to me two hours ago. So I get a lot of ideas from people. Like I have a long list of topics. I mean, it's, it's long, like hundreds long. <laughs> That idea you just sent me is not on the list, and it is now. That's a great one. <laughs> I, I thought about it because top because five. I... He, had, he did top five transformations. Oh, yeah. right. So oh. I, there's a couple of variations oh. of that, but that's actually a good one because there's a ton mm -hmm. of those. Whether it's you know enemy within and Kirk splitting in two or two bigs yeah. or seven. Yeah. Or, I mentioned like oh, I, I mentioned like that. three of them. I mentioned like three of them to you. And, and yes. that was the only three that first came to mind. But uh, but if it was something like that that you're interested in, I'll definitely be on. That's or any easy. anybody, uh, John. That goes to you too as well. So I mean, you know, you know you that uh, there's an animated uh, episode that would deal with transformation as well. Just saying, Jim. <laughs> Wait, what, what did you say? What? Uh, <laughs> Polly was uh, referring to animated series has some great transformation episodes. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Polly. You, yeah, you open the it. door. Do it, I gotta go there. Uh, Do the Picard right. face palm, Jim. Come on. <laughs> Marty, I, I know you gotta hit the road soon. Yeah, so, I gotta so hit the us. road. So uh, yeah, I'm right, at Marty. Marty Travel Marty on yeah. Twitter. My show is at Reading Trek. I read a lot of books. Find me in Vegas. I'll give you a bookmark. You know, right. I'll have hundreds right. of them with me. So. Oh, nice. Been great talking with you all. Thanks for being Patreons, patrons, Patreons, however you say it. <laughs> Thanks Talk so to much, you soon, Marty. Thank you. But I got to so run. You, have a good night, guys. Yeah. Bye. Have a good night. And, and Jim? Uh, oh, I am at Trek Ranks and at Enterprise Extra. And who did we lose? Oh, we did Sauce Tim. That's right. Uh, okay, that's it. Yes. So right, cool. listen to us at Trek Ranks. All right. Well, then that's it, guys. Th ladies, thank you all very much. Um, should we do this again? Yes. Sure. Let's go. No. <laughs> oh. All right, kangaroo. Put, top rope. So put, put, put out the word to your uh, Patreon friends and, uh, you know, tell them when we do that. We'll, we'll probably do one a quarter, I think, is, is all we'll do of this. So the next one will be after STLV, I would think. So this is Q2. The next one will probably do, you know, August or September or sometime in there. And uh, it'll be the same thing. A couple of us and a couple of our amazing Patreons. And, you know, on behalf of the network, I know on behalf of Jeff and Heather, I just want to thank all you guys for supporting us. Because what we do would not be possible if it wasn't for what you do. So thank you all for listening. And um, we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so this much for great. having us yeah. on. Uh, again, support for the Patreon listeners that are out there. So mm -hmm. keep supporting quality podcasts. Keep supporting these guys. Uh, you know, they love what they do. We love what you guys do. And I'm going to just add, it helps, and I'm sure Jeff's going to yell at me, but, man, it's really about the community. It's about yeah. the connection. Yeah. So all the people are out there and, and if we're getting feedback. That's That's the best part of it. So... Love yep. It. At the end of my my show, I actually say that you know we're all in this together, and we are really big, like one big federation. So we have yeah. to look out for each other, and it's just just the Tricorder Transmission Network. It just proves that a hundred percent. Love it. Love Great, it, guys. All right, I'll all be right. in touch. I'm gonna I'm gonna DM all you guys. So hey, if you're listening to Patreon, you want to be on the show? <laughs> that might be a way to do it. Yeah, that's it. That's the way okay. to go. All right. All right. Well, good night, guys. everybody. Okay, Live long and prosper. Love, love to you all. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.